on my selection, which was unusual, uh, during the resistance to interrogation. Now, you've had a hard week on the run, no food, and living in just your clothes, piss wet through, and sometimes it's all around Scotland and further down uh, to Northumberland. So you're, you're knackered. And then you go into a, a, a resistance to interrogation for 30, 36 hours. And you get in, you get to, it's, it's very realistic. You are, you're subjected to sleep deprivation, which really screws your mind up. But you're interviewed by different people. Um, you'll usually get a guy who looks decent. He'll ask you nice questions and he'll say, if you sign this piece of paper, I'll give you this bar of chocolate. You'll get a right nasty looking guy who's going to threaten you. You know, he's going to knock your head in. You'll get an old guy who will just keep asking you the same question. And he, it's a false, he puts you in a false sense of security because you think he's a dithering old guy. And then you get a woman. And I'll tell you what, you go into a room as big as this table and behind you and the woman's there there's two guards behind you and there's cameras and what it is is all the other interrogators are watching your reaction and she's listening to them and they do an analysis on you so first thing she does is uh get your overalls off so you're freezing cold so your dick's disappeared <laughs> yeah and she laughs like that she's like that <laughs> you call that a cock you know is that what's that what, what are you going to do with that well i mean to me i'm just like just blanket, zone it out, and you're there because you can't talk. Can't you? You can only see your name, rank, and number. That's it. And I'm thinking they can punch the shit out of me because they can't kill me because it's an exercise. But your head starts to get twisted, and these guys are in foreign uniforms and stuff. And you're thinking, is this real? And you start questioning yourself. Well, these lads. One lad, he was a big old paratrooper, being down south. He launched himself over the table to knock this bird's head in. And obviously the, the guards pulled him down. He was off selection. And he'd done all the work on the hills, done all the work in the jungle. And then another guy did it. And she had seven guys crack under an interrogation. And it's, it is, it's a, it's, a, it's a mental state. And it's, it's hard to t tell you. I mean, if you, if you were doing some psychedelic, you know there isn't uh, like say gnomes running around the floor, but they're there. That's like not being on drugs, but it's like being on drugs because you haven't slept for maybe three or four days. And then the, when, you're in the, when you're in the bag, in the pen, you're in stress positions, with being subject to white noise, and it really like screws your head um, in a big way. And that's the easiest way to interrogate anybody is, first of all, keep them up for a week. And then they'll start seeing things, they'll hear voices, and then you throw a bit of waterboard in, and they'll be fucking singing like a, a budgie. Uh, I don't know if this is true, but I, I used to watch the, I don't know what film it was, but they used to, I think they used to put the soldiers under the water, but it used to just tap on the top of their head, like drip. drip. Yeah, it's just and to make you... They just used to lose their shit. Yeah, you, you can, it's making anybody uncomfortable, because the white noise... It's, it's a like non-evasive in terms of it's not being hit with a stick because the good thing is somebody's hitting, hitting you with a stick and I'm sure you've had a fair few beatings. When they're hitting you, you grit your teeth and say, go on, you bastard, you know, and it, it, it gets your adrenaline up, it gets everything up and you, you're getting ready to go back when nobody's touching you and you're, your back's breaking, your arms are breaking or you're in a, a sitting position with your hands on your head and then somebody's pouring water over you just to make you cold and you're freezing and that, it, it just, it, it wears you away. So that's the mental torture yeah, of yeah. it, not the physical? Yeah. And it's, it's, you're kept in a room under their control. All I did was 36 hours. You know, I know it's 36 hours. You don't know how far in you are, how far, you know, you've got to, to go. In fact, you're that screwed. Before you go in on the exercise, because it's a week on the run and being chased by, say, infantry units with dog teams. So you might have had about three or four beatings during that period. Um, they said, you, you, when you finish, um, it'll be the sergeant major of training wing. He'll have a white armband on and he'll, he'll get you out the room. And sure enough, this guy, Don, came and he went, Jordy, uh, that's it. I didn't believe him. I'm like, this is a fucking trick. And I sat outside on the floor and he said, are you all right yet? And I was like, wouldn't speak to him. And it took me about three hours until other guys were coming out of the pen and we're all sat together because you're that aware that this could be a setup, but it wasn't, you know, but that's how much it screws your head. Yeah. How important is it going through that training and those exercises 
for if you ever do get captured? Is well, it, really it, important? It, it is important, but um, the guys that were captured when I was on the run, another element came in and it was down to the telephone. Now, what you've got to do is, or what we know is, you've got to hold out for a minimum of 12 hours and um, the information that you have will be rendered useless. So it means you're going to take a beating, you know, for a good period of time. The the way of soldiering now is, is, is changed quite a lot because they have tracking devices on them. So everybody knows, oh, they're being captured. You've got like clear comms, you've got this and that. But some of my friends, the Iraqis who were in, in, interrogating them and like beating them had been to Sandhurst and they had friends who were in the British army. So one guy's in front of an Iraqi interrogator and he said, so what's your regiment? And he went, parachute regiment. He knew it was SAS, but he just said, no, parachute regiment. And he went, right, okay, who's your uh, company commander? And you remember, you don't know if you're going to get around in the back of your head and stuff like that. So it was, you know, it's tense. Uh, for then the Iraqi to turn around and go, yeah, your, your com uh, company commander said, Josh, Josh Thomas, I was in Sanders with him. I know, him. I know his wife, Julie, and they've got two kids. And it's nearly bringing in that relationship that he knows people that you know, and you think, okay, where's this leaving me? So the dynamics of interrogation have changed. Waterboarding's a very good tool um, because not many people will get through that. So no, it's just, you've got to hold out for... Basically, when you get caught, you've just got to remember, I'll hold out for as long as I can. And you know that back at base, they're wiping the slate clean of anything that you were doing, or any codes you may have, any locations, um, because they're going to get, they're going to get yeah. that information.